My first day in class in seminary, the priest who was teaching us the Sacrament of Reconciliation, the very first thing he said to us was, gentlemen, you are not there to be a judge. You are there to communicate God's mercy and love. You have no business judging anybody, which is true because the priest is a sinner and the priest goes to confession. And it's funny you would ask me this today because I went to confession this morning, <laughs> so myself. So that's the first thing is don't be afraid. The second thing is to come in to meet with a priest in order to make confession. I think the elements of a good confession are that I'm trying to be honest and I'm sorry and I want to do better and I'm willing to listen for advice. If the priest is a good confessor, he's going to be praying the whole time the person is confessing, asking the Holy Spirit to guide him so that he says the right thing and that he gives good advice and that he responds with compassion. Lots of people will talk about what time that they had a bad confession you know, where somebody didn't hear them well or, did, or yelled at them, and God forbid, yelled at them or something. But really, in the number of confessions that I've made in my life, I haven't had that many bad confessions. I've been blessed with good priests that have heard me. So that's a, a big thing is the, to go in unafraid, try to be honest, be sorry, and, and want to do better. And those are the elements that you need for a, a good confession, that I want to improve my life and I want to get better with God. And God is merciful. Why do we use the parable of the prodigal son? The prodigal son was prodigal in that he wasted the wealth of the, the father. That's what the word prodigal means. It doesn't mean sorry. The kid isn't really sorry. The kid has this whole scheme plan. You know, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna tell my father I'm really sorry. And But Jesus says in the parable of the prodigal son that after he has thrown away all the money, the father sees him, what? From a long way off. The father has been waiting. And then Jesus says, the father runs to him. In the Middle East, fathers do not run to wayward children. They wait for the wayward child to come back. God doesn't. God is always there with his arms open and wants me back. And that's important to remember going in to make confession. God is waiting for me. He's always waiting for me. He always has his arms open. He's always waiting for me. And then the father in the parable puts a ring on his finger, shoes on his feet, and dresses him in fine linen and kills the fatted calf. He does all those symbols that restore the son to who he is in the family and brings him back completely. He doesn't make him one of the hired servants. He doesn't treat him like a servant or a slave. He restores him completely, and that's what confession does. He restores me completely in the church, in the body of Christ, and brings me back. That's what it's all about, is bringing me back, not punishing me. It's bringing me back to be restored and get me back on the right road. So Father, so what does the sacrament of confession actually look like? So many people don't go because they just don't know what to do. What does it look like? If I want to go to confession to you, uh, knock on your door, we sit down, and then, and then what? So we would sit down like this. Right. In the Byzantine rite, confessions are always face to face. It's not in a confessional. That sometimes can be hard for people that when they realize that and say, well, I'm not gonna do this. But again, you know, the priest, it, cannot treat you any differently afterwards, cannot dwell on your sins or anything like that. We'd go crazy if we did. <laughs> so it's like this, or a person kneels down on the kneeler, there's an opening prayer, and then after the opening prayer, the person makes their confession. That at the end of their confession, then priest and penitent talk together. All right, what are the things, I always ask people, what are the things that bother you the most of your confession? What do you think you really have got to work on to be closer to God, to be a better Christian, to be a better person? What is it from your confession that you think really need to improve? And then talk about that. All right, well, what are some ideas? I give people prayers, particular saints or devotions to try things to work on, how to go about it in a different way, try something different so that you don't fall back into that particular sin, have the spiritual strength to resist that sin. And then at the end, say your act of contrition and at the end of the act of contrition and this is why the sacrament has to be face to face because then the stole is put over the person's head the prayer of absolution so it's you and god see underneath 
I'm outside. The prayer of absolution is, may our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, with the grace, mercies, and love he has for all people, forgive your sins and, and failings. You are forgiven and you are absolved of all of your faults. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Do your best to sin no more. Pray for me, a sinner. Amen. I don't say I. In the Eastern tradition, the priest never says I. It's, it's always passive. Right? You are forgiven and you are absolved of your faults. So it's emphasizing the work of, of the Holy Spirit. And then at the end, you know, go in peace, do your best to sin no more, pray for me a sinner. It's a reminder to the priest to stay humble. You know, I'm a sinner. Like where I started with that priest in my seminary class years ago. Wow. Okay. That's beautiful. <laughs>